Please note that police chases can be dangerous and unpredictable. We do not condone reckless driving or any other illegal activity. Our videos are intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. In the helicopter, we're barely keeping up. Uh, and uh, again, a vehicle code violation leads to this uh, 140 mile plus chase on the 605. Uh, you mentioned this was a newer model Corvette, 50 miles an hour consistently. Anyway, he's completely blacked out and driving at about 130 miles an hour plus. It's a Corvette. The want is vehicle code violations. Vehicle code violations. Westbound 210 in San Dimas now, uh, about 150 miles an hour. It's a Corvette, and the want is vehicle code violations. Hey, copy. Hey, copy that. Twenty nineteen Corvette. Okay, copy that one minute. I think uh, NBC is starting with me live, uh, Daisy. It's CHP, yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Mike, I got you. Go ahead. Happy that? Yeah, um, Glendora. Colleen, this one is so scary. I'm just holding my breath. This guy has been driving at incredibly fast speeds, as you said, and you see the speeds there now, about 140 miles an hour. The vehicle is a 2019 Corvette, and the want is vehicle code violation. So it could be something as simple as uh, he didn't have a license plate on the vehicle or something of that nature. But you can see just how incredibly dangerous this is as he moves across all lanes here of the westbound 210 freeway in the Azusa area now, so very close here to the 210 and the 57, and it looks like he's getting on that transition now to transition off of the 210 or possibly exit. I think this is actually going to force him off, uh, so he's exiting here off of the 210 freeway. We're on Vernon Avenue. He really hasn't been on surface streets during this pursuit. He was on the 210 east. He turned around then and got on the 210 west, and then prior to that, he was on the 60 freeway. Originally, it was Pomona police that were in pursuit. It is now CHP. Did it start in Pomona? Yeah, we believe it started in Pomona with Pomona police officers there in their city. They were chasing him on surface streets and he jumped on the 60 freeway. He was going northbound. Once he got to the 210, he went eastbound and then he on the 60 freeway. He was going northbound. Once he got to the 210, he went eastbound and then he U-turned at about, uh, I want to say it was Rancho Cucamonga. He U turned around and got back on the westbound 210. Uh, there we go. He's driving so fast here. He just uh, got some air there as he makes his way here through a residence residential neighborhood, the speeds right now are the slowest we've seen him go because it has been so incredibly fast, but it looks like he may have just worked his way back onto the freeway.
Uh, Ileana, uh, we've been talking about the speeds. Uh, this is the slowest we've seen him go so far. He's done well over 150, up to 160 miles an hour. There are no black and whites behind him, correct? This is strictly tracking from the air? They're not going to be able to keep up with him, Colleen. Sadly, uh, the police vehicles uh, just aren't equipped the way that a Corvette would be able to travel at these high speeds. For a moment, some units were uh, trying to get behind him, but uh, it's pretty much uh, impossible to keep uh, tabs on him from the ground. So this is going to be really uh, at the controls here of the police helicopter. It's the Ontario police helicopter that is overhead, PD-30. They've been overhead this entire time, doing a great job of not losing him but it's a tough one because even at the speeds that we can travel up here uh, in the helicopter we're barely keeping up uh, and uh, again uh, the speeds that are r uh, right now are at about 130 miles an hour continuing uh, westbound on the 210. Well I was going to ask you what's the top speed for a helicopter I didn't think it was much more than that. It really isn't, Colleen. We can do about 160, uh, so comfortably uh, 140, 160 would kind of be our pretty much our max, uh, where uh, my pilot James would be uh, literally going at the fastest speed the helicopter could possibly go. Uh, but it looks like he's making that transition now to the southbound 605 freeway. So uh, from the 210 West, gone on the southbound 605. As far as we know, the car isn't stolen, so if it has plates and if police officers were able to get close enough to run them. Perhaps they know where the vehicle is registered to and uh, they can plan on uh, catching up with the uh, individual or individuals at that point. Again, this is a Corvette, so at most it's going to sit two people. At this point, unclear if the driver is a man or a woman. And we don't know how many people might be in the car or uh, you say it was uh, a vehicle code violation, so they attempted to stop the car? Yeah, they attempted to stop it because of a, a simple vehicle code violation. So literally it could be that your taillight was out, you didn't have a license plate or didn't have a re registration tag. Something super simple that literally you just pull over, you get a quick ticket and away you go. It doesn't turn into what this is going to be. This is going to be a felony at these speeds. Uh, you are endangering the public. Uh, obviously this is now reckless driving. It's failure to yield. Uh, you, name the the fence he's probably done it at these speeds uh, clocking at about uh, 125 right now as he proceeds southbound on the 605 freeway uh, into Irwindale you said Irwindale give us an idea of the next exit coming up here uh, so if he stays on the southbound uh, 605, he's going to cross the 10 freeway first and then the 60 freeway. Uh, in terms of exits, Lower Azusa Road would be the nearest exit. But it, at this point, it does look like he's committed to staying on the freeway. And for the most part, it seems like he likes staying on the freeway because uh, as long as this pursuit has been going on, which uh, we, we estimate it's been at least 30 minutes or so, uh, he's been on the freeway for the most part, the 60 freeway, the 210 and now the 605. Well, it really gives them a chance to open up that high, high performance car there. Absolutely. We, I remember covering another Corvette chase uh, a few weeks ago, and it was a very similar situation. It was a Corvette as well, also top speeds, about 140 miles an hour. And at that, and at one point, when they got to Camarillo, uh, the CHP simply had to let it go. Uh, their ground units weren't able to keep up, and the helicopter couldn't keep up either. Uh, so at that point, they just had to let the individual go and uh, hopefully get them at another point in time. Uh, but in this case, uh, again, simple vehicle code. The Violation leads to this 140-mile-plus uh, chase on the 605. Uh, you mentioned this was a newer model Corvette here, uh, doing speeds Thank closer you. to 150 miles an hour consistently. Um, any idea what, what year, Ileana? Yeah, it's a 2019 uh, from what we're hearing. So uh, one of the police units was able to get close enough uh, to try to decipher that. But they're saying it's a 2019 uh, Corvette. And uh, I do have a little more information from our, our tipster, uh, PubScan LA, uh, who was the first to tell me about this pursuit. He's telling me that the vehicle code violation was possibly driving the wrong way. Uh, so he was possibly driving the wrong way in Pomona. Uh, Pomona police officers, of course, spotted him, tried to pull him over, but he just took off. And the pursuit is now, oh my gosh, 160 miles an hour. Incredible. Okay, uh, give us an idea of location again. Once again, City of Industry, uh, has he crossed over the 10th freeway yet? 
Yeah, so he crossed over the 10. He's already coming up to the 60. At the speeds that he's traveling at, Colleen, he's literally coming up to the next freeway within two, two to three minutes. Uh, what would take you and me probably 15 minutes to do, uh, he's uh, being able to close that gap in just a minute's time. Uh, but uh, he's approaching uh, Rose Hills now, uh, so still uh, southbound on the 605 freeway, but coming up to the 60, and he may be hopping on that 60. It looks like this is the transition here. I'm presuming if Pomona PD was going to stop him, he was on surface streets uh, when they tried to pull him over driving the wrong way. Yeah, we believe that he was uh, on uh, surface streets in Pomona because Pomona police officers wouldn't be patrolling the freeway. That would be CHP, of course. So then in that case, it seems like he was on surface streets. Pomona police officers spotted him, tried to pull him over. And again, it would have been a minor infraction, I'm sure, but instead he jumped on the freeway. And since then, the CHP has taken over the chase because they are the police of our freeways. And uh, they're going to be best equipped to handle the chase on the highway. Uh, in this case, uh, he's now on the 60 freeway. I believe it's saying east, but uh, it's actually going west. Uh, our map is uh, taking a moment to catch up here, but we're westbound on the 60 freeway coming through El Monte. Well, at those speeds, it's hard for everyone to catch up. What is the procedure? What's the um, SOP on this now? So normally we would be talking about something like a pit maneuver, right? With a car this small, it's possible. But at these speeds, it's just not going to happen. Uh, just like last night, we had that big rig pursuit where a, pursuit, or where a pit maneuver wasn't going to happen because of size. In this case, it's just not going to happen because of speeds. He's driving simply too fast. Uh, they could try a spike strip, though. That is a possibility. They would just have to decipher what way he's going to go. And for the most part, he is somewhat predictable because when he does hop on a freeway, he, he it seems like he's staying on it for a little bit before transitioning but the only other problem is that he's kind of all over the roadway uh, which makes it really difficult to guess which lane he's going to be in so at this point all the police can really do is just track him from the helicopter uh, my pilot jim does say uh, he sees about two police units that are trailing behind they're not directly behind him and i'm not going to widen out too much uh, out of fear that I'm going to lose him at these speeds. Uh, and I should also mention there was a portion in the pursuit when we first got overhead that he was driving blacked out, uh, making oh. the pursuit even that much more dangerous. Well, at least the, uh, an observation here as we look at your picture, um, the freeway seems to be wide open. There are not that many cars and big rig trucks out there tonight. Yeah, fortunately. I'm just looking up ahead as far as uh, I can see. I can see till, till about uh, the 710 freeway, and it does look like it's pretty wide open. Uh, my concern is, though, as he gets closer to East L.A., there has been ongoing construction at the East L.A. interchange, and the 60 freeway has been one of the freeways that has been impacted by that. So hopefully this all ends before then, before he gets anywhere near those uh, Caltrans workers and that closure. But looks like he may be exiting now. This is the uh, Wilcox exit. It's a shared exit with uh, Garfield Avenue here in Monterey Park. It'll be interesting to say, see if he does what he has done in the past. He gets off, he swings around on surface streets. Uh, that one area, he went through the neighborhood and then got back on the freeway. Yeah, and, and in a way, I, I actually wish he stays on the freeway because it does make it a little bit more dangerous because it at least takes uh, pedestrian traffic, bicyclists, uh, and red lights out of the equation. Uh, but he's back on surface streets here on Wilcox Avenue. So unclear if this is an area that he's familiar with. It's difficult to say that he is, considering that this started in Pomona. You would think that uh, perhaps he's trying to get back to Pomona, but of course uh, we're here in Monterey Park, uh, so uh, closest freeways are going to be the 60, uh, essentially between uh, the uh, 710 and the 605 along the 60, so right in the middle if you had to split the difference. And uh, slowing down a bit. Hopefully this is, oh uh, no, I was hoping that he was just going to pull over and get out, uh, but it, uh, he's continuing instead. Typically, when they slow down like this, they're almost looking for a canopy. He knows he doesn't have any black and whites behind him. He only has the um, uh, law enforcement chopper overhead. So uh, you think he's maybe looking for a place to bail out? Yeah, I wanted to widen out there, Colleen, because I could just, uh, out of the corner of the um, my eye, I, just I could see it. what looked like a... Uh, police lights and they are behind him. They are giving him a little bit of room. They're not uh, right on his tail, uh, but uh, I think that's probably why he slowed down and didn't get out of the car. Uh, so this might be a situation, uh, knowing that he's uh, looking for a place to ditch it, that's at least the vibe that I think we're all getting. Uh, they may give him a little bit of room so that he can come to a stop. And of course, the police helicopter is uh, going to stay overhead and keep an eye on him and uh, be right there when this all comes to an end.
We just look at all these intersections where the um, where he's blowing through red lights and stop signs on, on either side of the people who are up at those intersections. But you know, you've got you've got to look at some of the drivers in California. They're so savvy and hip to this. They know when they see someone coming up like that behind them, the best thing to do is just pull over. That's as close as I've seen a black and white so far tonight. It really has been, and I'm surprised he's not driving faster, really, considering how fast we've seen him drive before. Uh, but he's now at about, uh, oh, uh, I spoke too soon. Uh, he's mm -hmm. uh, uh, going about 80 miles an hour here on a, on a street. So, and the, that's what makes it so dangerous. It looks like he's trying to jump back it's on the back freeway, on the and freeway. that's exactly what he's going to do. Yep, here we go, uh, westbound on the 60. So he's in Montebello right now? Yeah, so he's uh, in Montebello and uh, going to continue to the west. So that's going to uh, put him towards uh, places like City Terrace, East LA, if he continues that. But eventually, uh, the 60 freeway does, though, does come to an end at the East LA interchange. So that's where he'd have to, he'd be forced to jump on another freeway or exit. But uh, for now, it looks like he's fully committed, committed here westbound on the 60. And this is the area where you said there's a lot of construction as you move into the downtown area. Yeah, the, the construction is, uh, yeah, it's been at the East LA interchange, which uh, is actually the busiest interchange in the world. So it's uh, right where the 60, the 5, and the 10, and the 101 actually all come together. Um, so he's coming up to that very soon. You can see that uh, the markers there on the ground that uh, indicate what lane you need to be in to uh, transition. So right now, the first freeway that will come up is the 710, and then if he, st if he continues uh, westbound on the 60, that will get him into East LA. I want to remind uh, people who are watching this with us right now, the original want on this was a vehicle code violation, and it was for driving the wrong way. So presumably, he has plates on the car, and it almost looks like from the angle um, we're seeing here, it does look like he has plates, which means they've been able to run those plates, right, Ileana? Yeah, it does look like he has plates, and uh, it's been really difficult for uh, the officers to get close enough. Uh, so I haven't heard them run the plates, but they were at least able to somewhat figure out what year the vehicle was. Uh, so they've been close enough, at least, to, to get a look at the car. I know it's hard to see the color right now because of the darkness, but it is a, a blue uh, uh, Corvette, again, a, a 2019. It's a sports car, so two-door at most, just two people. But at this point, unclear if it is two people or if it's just uh, the single driver. And at this point, unknown if it's a man or a woman. Once again, can you give us a locator on this? We're in Boyle yeah, Heights. So we're, uh, yeah, we're still on the westbound 60. We're coming up to that East LA interchange. Uh, again, uh, in Boyle Heights, where the 5, the 60, and uh, the 10 and the 101 all come together here. So uh, he's going to have to make a decision because it does come to an end. My guess is he'll, he'll jump on the 10, but it does look he like that's what he's set it. up to do. Like yep. He committed to the 10 right there. Yeah, committed uh, westbound 10. So this is going to put him uh, into the downtown Los Angeles area. So this is the, this should be the portion of the 10 that runs south of the buildings. But uh, again, heading into downtown Los Angeles. Once again, if you're just joining us, this uh, started in Pomona tonight. Vehicle code violation. Driving the wrong way, it has escalated to this. He's doing, well, he's, have we lost him, Ileana? Is he underneath there? Yeah, I just had him under the uh, overpass there. I didn't see him pop out. I think he's a little bit up ahead. So I'm going to jump up ahead because I think he's just a little bit in front of us. What is shocking about this is uh, this Corvette's been doing speeds anywhere from 130 to 150. We looked and clocked him one time in the chopper at 160 miles an hour. And um, there are no uh, law enforcement vehicles behind him. But Ileana, as you pointed out, it's hard to keep up with him even in a helicopter. Okay. Sorry, Colleen. I'm uh, trying to catch up to him here. He's just uh, at the uh, 10 in Alameda, so we're just trying to catch up a little bit. Normally, we could look down at the picture and pick him out right away because he's going so much faster than everyone else. Is that him at the top of the screen there? Yeah, it looks like uh, this is, is him here. So as you said, all I had to do was look for the fastest car. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he helped me out in that case. Uh, but yeah, we had lost him there as he made the transition uh, under the... Uh, East LA interchange there to continue westbound on the 10. So let me throw the map up there uh, for you yet again. So he's still westbound on the 10, coming up to the 110 freeway. So uh, right next to the Crypto.com Marina and the Convention Center. But at this point, it uh, looks like he is committed to continue uh, westbound 10.
Ileana, when did this start? So at this point, uh, we don't know the exact start time, but uh, our tipster first told us about it at about 10.45. So it was about 10.45 uh, that, we, that he uh, let us know that it was going uh, northbound on the 60 freeway. At that point, it was already up to the 210, and then uh, we got overhead when he was already uh, uh, turned around on the 210. He had made his way uh, westbound on the 210 freeway uh, by then. So it's been going on now for at least 30 minutes that we've known about it, but likely uh, at least 15 minutes before that. And you would think going at this rate of speed for this long, his tires should be smoking pretty soon. Oh, yeah. I mean, at these speeds. And um, oh, he's in the construction zone, Colleen. So exactly what we were afraid of. Uh, you see all the cones there. Of course, there's going to be Caltrans workers here. So uh, that's uh, really what scares me about uh, a pursuit at this time of the night. He just took a cone out there, uh, but hopefully that's the only thing he hits here uh, as he continues westbound uh, on the 10 freeway coming up to Western. Okay. Is he getting off or is he... Yeah, he's in the collector lane here. So if he just stays on it, it's going to keep him back on the 10 but he might be exiting. This is gonna force him off at Western, I believe. So uh, he's at the off ramp there, gonna go under the freeway. He's uh, south on Normandy, actually. So that's Normandy. He should be popping out the other side here. And he's gonna just simply get back on the freeway. So going back eastbound 10 freeway from uh, Normandy. Once again, this uh, started with Pomona PD. So you would think he'd be sort of headed. There we go, we've got the picture back. Uh, and he is on the the 10 eastbound at this point. Hey guys, point. it was because uh, we were on a turn. Uh, uh, so speeds are still at about 100 miles an hour, Colleen, and uh, pardon uh, the shot there for a second. We, uh, we were on a turn, so that sometimes makes the shot drop out real quick. Uh, but uh, we're continuing uh, on the 10 freeway. He's essentially right at the 10 and the 110, so this would be his chance to get on the 110 if he has any intention of that. But as you said, pursuits tend to return to an area where they began. It's the area that the driver uh, is probably familiar with. And so uh, if he has any intention of getting back to Pomona, he needs to go eastbound on uh, the 10 freeway, and that's exactly where he's at now. You know, maybe we've been watching this so long, but it doesn't even look like he's driving that fast right now. No, by comparison, absolutely I, not. Seriously. I mean, we saw speeds. How fast was this? F fastest we saw? About 160. It was about incredible. About 160 is what uh, I saw. Yeah, so he's uh, he's about half of the, that speed right now, which is, which is incredible when you think about it. But he is uh, slowing down a little bit. He's at a light, going to go under the freeway. I'm going to move over because he should pop out the other side. There he is, and he's uh, going to get back on the, the freeway, it looks like. Actually, he's, he's paralleling the freeway, so he's not quite on the freeway. He's uh, just on the north side of the freeway, going to work his uh, way through uh, surface streets here in the downtown LA area, currently on Venice and Hope. Give us a number street there as well, just for people to get their bearings. I'm trying to figure out uh, exactly where it is. How yeah, far so is the he from Staples? Street, or not Staples. Yeah, Crypt. it should be uh, about 15th Street should be the nearest numbered street. Uh, so uh, he's really not far from uh, the buildings here in downtown. He just made a right turn, they said. I have to keep an ear on the scanner, too. He's so easy to lose at the speeds that he's going out. out at. And then with all of the twists and turns here, it's a, he's a tough one to keep up with. He should pop out the other side of this apartment building. Yep, there he is. So he's on Grand. This is what makes it really difficult is when we've got all these uh, high rises and a pursuit makes its way through here. So I'm uh, keeping an ear on the scanner and just uh, trying to uh, keep tabs on him. But the airship is also saying that he's losing him in the buildings, understandably. I think you might have gone this way, but it's a guess. <laughs> this is a two-way street. It was hard to tell. It almost looked like he turned down a one-way street. It was a one-way street, and he went the wrong way, which is exactly the reason why uh, police uh, tried to pull him over to begin with. Uh, so he did go the wrong way there for a moment. Uh, but here he is. He should pop out right here. Again, these are tough to follow when we've got all these uh, high-rises. So we're dodging the buildings, dodging cranes, currently uh, northbound on Broadway from Olympic. Does it seem like he's trying to find a freeway? It seems like it. I think he's lost here. It doesn't seem like this is his turf. Again, this started in Pomona, uh, so he's uh, likely more familiar with the um, freeways over there, the 60, the 210. It seemed like he favored those and, and did quite well driving around there. 
uh, but now in the downtown LA area, it seems like he just simply made a mistake getting off the freeway and is trying to work his way to the freeway. So the nearest freeway would be the, the 110 freeway and uh, that should be coming up soon. We want to remind viewers as well, this is a high performance car. It is a 2019 Corvette going so fast at times that uh, the choppers had trouble keeping up. The, um, the black and whites pulled back because there's no way they could keep up that kind of speed. And it's dangerous on the freeway as well. You know, I can't help but notice the paint job on that. Is it purple or blue? It's hard to tell. And yeah, hard to tell. I mean, it is a beautiful car, really, all things considered. It looks like a, a definitely like a purplish blue. It's got a little bit of black. It seems like a black roof, a little bit of black on the hood. Uh, as you said, a, a high-performance car, a 2019 Corvette, and we have seen what this car can do. We saw speeds as fast as 160 miles an hour, and he really has slowed down a lot uh, by com compared with the speeds we had seen. So I just saw him uh, next to that building. We'll see if he pops out the other side here. But I'm also keeping an ear on the scanner just in case he made a turn that I didn't see. Again, so the want on this failed. was originally, um, do we see him down there? He, uh, failure to yield for a, a minor violation, it looked like. He was driving the wrong way. And now he's racked up so many violations, it'll take some time to even figure them out. Yeah, and what I'm hearing from the police helicopters that they have him at Olive and Hill, which is pretty much where we're at, uh, mm -hmm. but they said that they're losing him. Uh, so he should be relatively behind this building here somewhere. So as we come around, well, perhaps we'll be able to catch a glimpse of him as well. But they say they still see him in this area, and they're just simply trying not to lose him. And because this is a code violation, they more than likely know who's behind the wheel, correct? Hold on, 7th up here. Okay. So we're still looking Brandon for a. him in that maze right of high-rises downtown. Has and he so stopped Colleen, he should be very close to here. So he's at uh, 8th and Grand. So he should be around this area. You see the police uh, vehicle there trying to find him. So he should be in this area. I am hearing that the, they're trying to get the airship to just follow it and take the units off, but the helicopter's having trouble keeping tabs on it. So at this point, uh, the, at this point, what I'm hearing is that the police helicopter does not see him, uh, but they're trying to get some of these units behind him. As well, there are a number of parking garages down there where he could have pulled in and no one would even notice. Yeah, I mean, if, they, if you want to get lost, uh, this is a place to do it. I'm hearing that the last uh, location they saw him at was 7th and Grand. So he should be very close to the uh, U.S. Bank building. You more than likely know who's behind the wheel because this was a code in all, violation. In all likelihood, yeah, in all likelihood they do, especially if they, especially if the car's not stolen. They should be able to just run the plates and get the registration information and figure out who that is. So we're hearing that he's roughly in this area. Again, the airship doesn't have him right now, so they're just trying to get the units behind him. Well, we're going to stay with you as well as we um, continue to um, look for any this movement downtown in terms of the LAPD or CHP officers. Who would The I LAPD would have jurisdiction here, Thank but you. more than likely the CHP would be sort of combing the streets as well, correct? Yeah, so they're looking uh, in this area, but what we're hearing is that he actually drove into an underground parking structure by the Bank of America. So uh, he's somewhere under the structure, which explains why the police helicopter doesn't have him. Uh, and of course, we're not going to be able to see him either, but the ground units are coming to this area. This is going to be LAPD's jurisdiction, so it's going to be LAPD that's going to respond um, in conjunction with the CHP since they were the units that were behind him. Give us a location again, a rough area where they think he is. Uh, so we are, of course, uh, in the downtown L.A. area, just off of the 110 freeway. Uh, the, some of the nearby streets would be uh, Figueroa, essentially uh, Figueroa between uh, 4th and Wilshire. Roughly that area was uh, where he was last seen. I'm just taking a few notes here. Ileana, what we're going to do is, as they continue to look for him, 
We are going to move on with some more news, but we'll uh, stay over the scene down there. Again, this is a, a driver who was wanted by Pomona PD for um, a, a violation of what appeared to be at the time a minor violation going the wrong way. Uh, he took off on the freeways doing speeds anywhere from 130 to 160 miles an hour. They are now searching for him in the downtown area on Fig, maybe between 4th and Wilshire. Ileana's overhead. We'll get back to her as soon as we know something new. They think he may have um, headed into an underground parking garage there near the U.S. Bank building. All right, other news tonight. There was an attack. Yeah, I have him right out your side. Yeah, they said grand in second. He went into this structure. Yeah. No, they don't have him. They they know he went into a parking structure here, but they're just looking for him.
Okay, sounds good. Yeah, it's their jurisdiction, so you would think they would be. Cop that, 30 seconds. Will do. It is, Colleen, and it's the underground parking structure for the Bank of America located on 3rd and Hope. And uh, it is in that structure where uh, officers last saw that Corvette uh, drive into it, at least. Uh, but they are yet to locate that blue Corvette and its driver. That driver wanted for a dangerously high-speed chase out of Pomona that made its way on several of our freeways until they got here to downtown L.A., drove into that parking structure, and the search is still on for that driver. That's latest here from downtown in News Chopper 4. Colleen, let's send it back down to you. Somebody else from the chopper. Oh, it doesn't have plates. That's how it from New Chopper 4. Okay, sounds good. 
assignment desk from the chopper. Do I have you on my group?